My name is Samuel Carlo, and today we're going to speak about the Polymer Starter Kit, which was announced at the latest Google I.O. If you're already familiar with the Web Starter Kit, the use of the PSK will be easy. But let's speak about what it actually does. Polymer Starter Kit contains a responsive web app power plate, a bunch of Polymer 1.0 new components, a lot of end-to-end -end build tools as Girl and Vulcanize, and some cool features as pre-made routing and offline support. Now, if you don't know what is routing in Polymer, or if you want to learn tricks, you should definitely start to follow the polycast made by Rob Dodson from the Google Developer Group. If you're like me, you should be already excited to see it in action. So let's stop waiting and let's start hacking. The first thing to remember is that the Polymer Starter Kit is still a beta. In order to get it, you can directly go on this URL developers.google.com slash web slash tools slash polymer dash starter dash kit slash or you can search it on Google. Once you're on the page, you can click on the download button over here that will redirect you on a GitHub. The GitHub contains three different packages of the PSK, with explanation and also installation instruction for Windows. For this introduction, we will download the Polymer Starter Kit dependencies checked, which is this one because it's the easiest package to install as everything is already prepared inside and just need to be decompressed. Me, I downloaded the Polymer Starter Kit 1.0.0 just to go through the different installations process but the result is the same. Once it's downloaded, you can uncompress and click on it. As you have the version with dependency checked in, you should be able to directly do a gulp serve. I installed everything in my version, so I will do it also. When the group server is initialized, we can directly check what's going on and see how it looks like. So let's have a look. And voila! Welcome on Polymer 1.0 starter kit. And as you can see, it comes with a pre-made layout, composed with few elements as a drawer panel, an iron page, some paper buttons, and also a few examples of data binding. The drawer contains links, which are displaying different sections of the iron page. But we'll look at the code here. What we can see is that when I click the routing is already done, as I said in the beginning of the video. And obviously, if you are unhappy with the pre-installed layout, you can choose another one through the links at the bottom of the home page. It looked great, it worked very well, but let's dive in to see how this piece of art is made. And as we can see, it's basic HTML code. So, here we have meta information, then the title of the page. Here we have a line that changed the top bar of the navigator on Android in order to integrate your application in a way better looking mode. Here we have all the information to make your, your, your uh, website, your application understandable by browsers on Android, iOS, and um, Windows Phone. As you can see, for example, you have resources called for the Add to Home Screen for Chrome on Android and the icon for X, which is contained in the subfolder images. And also the application name and blah, blah, blah. So this information are very interesting. And you have the steel sheet, then we are calling obviously web component like and the elements of the, of the application. Then we are coming on a body. And as if you are familiar with the Polymer 0.5, and as you can see, Polymer 1.0 changed the way you're declaring the full bleed and the, the layout. Um, here, it's put in a class, uh, which was not the case in Polymer 0.5. It's an important change, because if you're not putting it inside a class, it will not work. Then we are starting with a template. And again, uh, I've seen a lot of Polymer developers 
starting the application directly in an element which is not the good way to proceed uh, you should start with a template in order to obviously get the that binding and all polymer functions and then you can put elements this time inside this template as it's done in the polymer circuit so this example uh, give you a, a good way to start and a good way to, to proceed. So inside the template we have the paper drawer panel um, which contain obviously the drawer and the links, the menu. Uh, the menu contain home, users and contact and they're all linked uh, with the routing as we can see here and we'll talk about it later. We can see here uh, the attribute for selected data route, selected route which obviously choose you know this will make sure that when I change the page, the color here follow where I am. Then we have the paper header panel, which is containing the toolbar. Uh, and the toolbar contain uh, some buttons and the application title. So here, these buttons over here are part of the toolbar. Then we have the iron pages, which is containing the, the whole content of the web application. And this iron page is divided in four sections, home, users, user info, and contact. And uh, we will directly come back on it. But just let's finish to check what it have. Um, we are finishing with a paper toast, which is saying that the caching is complete and the app will work offline. And here we have the Platinum SW register, which is, which is caching the, um, the content of the web application in order to make sure that, it's on, that the whole content will be uh, available offline. And we end up by calling the app.js, which is containing some code for the for the offline service and and so on. So and we'll and we'll come back on it later. So now let's start by checking what the section or uh, in the in the iron page have inside and then we'll go through the all the files. The first one is home. And as we can see we have paper material elevation one which is a new element from polymer 1.0 and it's giving us this uh, paper you know, from material design, and it's amazingly working, and the result is, is good looking also. Then it's calling an, uh, an element called my greeting. Then we have a, a paragraph, another element, and another paragraph. The section users work in the same in the same way, but we have no elements called here. We just have a H2 title paragraph and a link then we have user info and this one is interesting because it contains a data binding as we can see uh, in user uh, params.name so here the, the data that it's binded it's params.name and we'll go on it later because it, you, you will see oh it, it's directly linked to the routing and then we finish with contact which is also containing only uh, h2 title and a paragraph so let's have a look on these elements um, and let's obviously uh, follow the path. So these elements are called in elements.html, which is here. In the subfolder elements, then elements.html. And as we can see, it called paper, iron and platinum elements in order to, the template, to make the template working. And then we have our own elements, so app, team, my list, and my greeting, and then the routing, which configure the whole way that the link will answer to, to where you're going. So in the app team, we have a um, pre-made CSS, which is amazingly done, because you can directly change the primary color, default primary color, and so on in order to to make the application look exactly how you want to, to it to look so it this is very amazing it's a good idea and um, it, it is the life a lot then 
Let's check in my greeting because this is the element called in the first section. This is the first element. Then we have my list is called. So we start with a DOM model, which is the new way to create a web component. Uh, in the past, it was a polymer element, and we were giving a name. Here we give it an ID. The ID is my greeting, and here we have the style, which is defined. And host, if you don't know what is it, it means that this element will say, "Okay, this is all I look like. This is this is my my stuff." Here we have the content of the of the module which is containing a h1 title and it's data binding we have data binded here reading then a span and an input and what is cool is that here and it's completely changing and I have a smile while talking about it because this is amazing uh, the value is directly binded is directly binded so here we have reading input and Listen for input even and set greeting to input value. And this is what is amazing. So what we're gonna see is that here the script say okay, this is my greeting, this is the element of my greeting, then properties greeting, so the variable type string, the value, the default value is welcome, and the notify is true. Notify is important because if it's false, then it will not be binded directly, and it's it, it will not be like you will have to make an observer and other thing. So here, the true make sure that if something change here, then it will be directly repercuted here. And so if we now go check what is going on, if here I change welcome by hello, then it directly change with these few lines of code. The whole system is already working. You don't have a lot of stuff to do. You just write this simple line of code and it's working well. Then my list. And as we can see, it's declared exactly as my greeting was. So here you have the module and then the script outside the module because this is the only way we can declare and create an element. Um, but now my list is a very interesting element because as we can see the template here, uh, have a DOM repeat and the DOM repeat mean that by putting an array that is defined here, just here uh, it will repeat every element of it um, and here we are sending the, the items and every time you get something you gonna write a list so a new a new a new cues and with a span and the value of the byte. So now in the script code, we can see that we are declaring polymer, obviously. And here we, we put is my list, properties items, type is an array, and notify true, which is like I told you uh, in my greeting that it's the only way that we can make a, a, a binding with with uh, with it in order to to be sure that when the hour will change, then the, the change will be directly effective on the display. So now if I add a line or you know if I have a code that add a line to push that push something in the array then it will be directly displaying uh, in this part in the template and this is amazing. So, and even if you change a line over here then it will be directly displayed. Uh, so whatever it is the action you can uh, push or remove anything. It, it will always react in the same, it will directly send the change and display them uh, in order to be sure that uh, every change are correctly seen by everyone looking at and using at your application. And here, re function, so when the, when the element is loaded and ready to, to be used, then we are creating the, the array which contains the list that we can see on the home page. Now that we've reviewed Polymer Starter Kit, let's have a bit of fun and let's make some things cool. What if we link this input box to the user page? It can be very, very funny to do. So let's make it. First of all, I need to check. On the user page, we can see that Rob is hard coded, so the username is hard coded directly. 
and the input is inside an element. So let's go in this element. First we need to go on the element subfolder and then my greeting. Here, as we've seen before, we have two times the variable greeting which is binded. So we have one variable binded two times. So every time I will change the value, we will say, for example, if I put A, it will say A and A over here. Let's first change that in order to have something good looking. Welcome and it will say A. Then let's change the default value by my name and obviously on your side put yours. Now we have the notify true which I explained before. But we're gonna put some things new. We're gonna put an observer. And here we have two things. The observer means that every time the value will change, this function will be called. And the underscore in front of the function name means that this function cannot be called outside this element. So it's a private function. Now, let's go out of properties and let's create the function. Data contain obviously the name, the value of, um, of our variable. Now every time the, the variable will be changed, we'll change the variable app name that we are creating right now. And in order to see if it's working, we're gonna display it on the index page. So on index.html, we're going to change rob in the section users by our variable. And let's see how it looks like. Welcome, Samuel. And if I go in users, we can see that Samuel is over here. But the problem is, when I click on it, it's still a rob, and we have to change that. But first, let's try if I change the name and put back Rob, we can see that it changed also it here. So the data binding is working well. Now, let's make it change over here too. First of all, we're gonna give an ID. And let's call that user link. And now, by going back to my greeting, we're gonna say that user link is equal to user data. And now, what we can see by going back on this page is that if I click over here, it will show me SAML. It was a very quick but funny things to do in order to make it more personal and obviously you can change it as like you can do whatever you want. So that's it about the polymer story and I hope you enjoyed this video as I did and hopefully you've learned some new stuff. It's my first video and I know it's not that much perfect but I will try to improve it in the future and as we say it's by doing mistakes that we learn. If you liked it Feel free to subscribe, comment and take contact with me through social media. Bye!